What's up everybody, it's Coding Jesus, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you both the things you need to have or to learn to become a software developer in the high frequency trading space, as well as the things that you think you might need to learn but actually don't, okay? This video will apply to you whether you are a self-taught developer, whether you are currently in school studying computer science, or whether you're actually looking to break into the space from a different field or organization. As you can tell, I am speaking to you off the cuff, obviously always from the heart, and I'm partially doing this outside holding the camera because I lost my tripod, so, you know, hopefully you like this format better. I do. I'm not scripted. I speak from the heart, and I strongly believe that if I need to have jump cuts every 10 seconds, then I don't deserve your time because I need to be able to communicate ideas succinctly if I want to have a future on YouTube, and especially if I want to be a good mentor to some of you out there. Okay, so let's get into the actual content of this video, guys. The first thing that you need to have is you need to be proficient in C++. There's no getting around it. You need to learn C++, you need to be good at it, and you need to be able to pass whiteboard questions, interview questions, and have pet projects written in C++. Why C++? I'm not gonna get too into it, guys, but the first two points that pump the jump into my head is one, the most important point, a low latency language, a language that is directly compiled into machine code executed by the CPU. And the second thing is the just vast amount of control you have writing C++, the control that the language provides you as a developer. Okay, so those are the two things that lead you to needing to learn C++ if you wanna become a developer in the high frequency trading space. Okay, Coding Jesus, what else do I need? Well, while I say you will need to learn C++ and become proficient at it, it is true, but it isn't the only thing you'll be writing, okay? You won't only be writing C++. In fact, as a junior developer, you might not actually get many opportunities to write C++ code. Why is that coding Jesus? Well, because when you join an organization, it's actually most likely that all the backend systems are written in already. And all those backend systems are written in C++. Okay, coding Jesus, and what else do I need to learn? The second thing you guys need to learn is a corollary language or a secondary language, okay? Which languages should I learn coding Jesus? Well, you should learn either C Sharp or Python. I actually much, I like C Sharp much better. Uh, what I was about to say is I'm, have a much stronger bias towards C++, to C Sharp, but Python is definitely a top contender that many firms use as kind of their secondary language or language of choice. Okay, Coding Jesus, why the hell do I need to learn a secondary language? I thought C++ is, is God mode, it's the God language. Well, it's actually not, guys. C++ is a great language, but you're not gonna write a front-end application in C++, okay? At the end of the day, what you need to understand when you're going to join a high-frequency trading firm is the people that make the money are the traders. And the traders aren't going to use an application written in C++ to view data that the actual backend services crunch for them, okay? So risk limits. Those things aren't going to be displayed in an application written in C++. They're going to be displayed in a language that can host front-end or that can be used to build front-end tools in, okay? So you're going to either use C Sharp to display that language that's crunched in the back end, or you're gonna be using Python, and you're gonna to wanna to build beautiful data visualization and analytics tools for these traders to use the information that's been grinded up in C++ on some back end server somewhere, okay? So having both a proficiency in C++ to write that back end code, as well as having a proficiency in either C Sharp or Python to build front end applications and analytics tools for traders is what you will need Really, it's the core of what you will need to become a software developer in the high-frequency training space. Okay, Coding Jesus, I understand what languages I'll need to learn, C++ and either C Sharp or Python, but what characteristics are employers looking for people looking to break into, uh, into the high-frequency training space as a developer? Okay, I think there's two key skills, and I'm gonna speak about the second one first. The second one is communication skills, okay? The first one is problem solving skills, but let's speak about communication skills first. Why do I need to be a great communicator, Coding Jesus? I mean, I know I need to communicate well in every job that I have, but why in high frequency trading in particular? Let me tell you why. The high frequency trading space will require you to speak to traders on an, almost on a daily basis, if not on a daily basis and every other day or max every third day, why? Traders run the show. Obviously, it's important for you to have quick, fast systems, and, and many firms are actually completely quantitative. They don't have any traders at all, but many high-frequency trading firms do have traders, and those traders are the guys bringing in the big bucks, okay? So if those traders aren't there, it doesn't matter how good your build system is, it doesn't matter how strong or how fast or how well-designed your code is, you won't have a job. 
So you will need to work with traders. And traders are very smart at what they do and they're very strong at what they do, but they might not be computer people. Some might, but most aren't and you shouldn't count on it. And that is not their job. It's okay that they're not computer people. So how does this relate to communication skills? Well, a trader will have a request for you. Either they want a feature added, maybe they want a completely new system built. Of course, you'll need buy-in from your manager, but brushing that aside, they might want this new feature built and you will need to understand what their requirements are and translate those requirements into technical requirements for you to actually execute on, okay? So you need to be able to communicate to those traders, to understand what they're telling you, to understand the different test cases that might need to be looked at or the edge cases that might come about from this feature request and then deliver on that product. So deliver on that feature request, okay? The delivery part is actually where the first quality that you will need as a high frequency trading developer comes into play. Like I said a couple of seconds or maybe a minute ago, you will need to be a great problem solver. Now, why do I say this? Hey, Coding Jesus, every organization says they're looking for problem solvers. Why are you any different? Okay, this comes down to the culture of high frequency trading firms. High frequency trading firms have a very individualistic culture. Okay, when you work with another trader, it will most likely be just you and them, or you and him, or you and her. Okay, you won't have many other developers working on the same feature with you. You won't be pair programming, okay guys? You will need to be able to solve these problems on your own. So you will need to have this very individualistic mentality to have a bent of individualism. And you will also need to have the problem solving skills to be able to think about these things on your own. Of course, you can reach out to somebody and ask for help, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be your responsibility to deliver this feature request. I know other organizations like Google have a more collectivist approach. They like sitting in a circle and talking about their fluffy socks and browsing Reddit and you know, bonding over kale salads for three hours before they actually do anything. But high frequency trading isn't like that. That's not the culture there, okay? So you need to be cognizant of that when you look for a job in the high frequency trading space. Okay, Coding Jesus, you talked for seven minutes about what you need. Let's talk about what you don't need or the misconceptions that people have as to what they think they need, but they actually don't in the high frequency trading space. Okay, the first thing is guys, and I think so many people have this misconception is you don't need to trade. You don't need to even know how to trade. Okay, people aren't looking for you to be some multi-million dollar algorithmic trader that's running high frequency strategies in their ba mom's basement, trading billions of dollars of cryptocurrency that they didn't even, nobody knew that they had. Okay, that's not the point of, that's not the demeanor of the person that becomes a high frequency trading developer. So you don't need to know how to trade. Yes, it's nice if you do know how to trade. Yes, it's nice if maybe you wrote some algorithm that trades somewhere but by no means are they expecting you to be some sort of wizard. And I think even the senior developers most likely aren't running some sort of quantitative strategy back at home with code that they've written and that they're making millions of dollars on. That's, that's not how it works, okay? So keep that in mind before you apply. Hopefully that kind of gets rid of some of the stress that you might have before you apply to these types of roles. But just know that passion, motivation, resilience, ambition is much more important than being some sort of unknown hacker elite billionaire trading trillions worth of cryptocurrency in your mom's basement, okay? The second misconception that a lot of people have is you have to be good at math. That's not true. You're not hired to be good at math, you're hired to be good at computers, and you're hired to write algorithms, you're hired to be able to help traders visualize data in an effective way to help them make money and build those back-end services that crunch data, push out different pieces of information like risk limits or latency figures, to make sure that traders are making the most amount of money that they can and that all your systems are running beautifully and cleanly, okay? The most math you'll have to do or have to know is addition, subtraction, modulus, and maybe matrix multiplication, maybe. And if you don't know matrix multiplication, Google it and learn it in 10 minutes, okay? If you can't learn it in 10 minutes, then maybe high frequency trading isn't for you, but you don't need to be some sort of math whiz. That's not what you're, why you're hired. The quants are there to do the math whiz type work. Okay guys, that was a, I think, four things that you need and maybe two things that I've just debunked for you as to what you don't need but think you might need to become a high frequency trader. Around 10% of people that watch this video are actually subscribed, so if you're interested in the high frequency trading space, if you're a developer looking to break into the high frequency trading space, if you wanna learn C++, if you are interested in becoming a better professional but also growing socially alongside me and having me help you grow, as, like I said, a professional and as a human being, then make sure to subscribe to this channel, guys.
I don't have a fancy marketing department. I have me with a camera speaking to people all across the world. And that's about it. So if you want to join my Discord, if you want to join the Church of Coding Jesus, make sure to click on the description on the link in the description box below. If you want to be mentored by me, I have a Calendly link in the description box below. You can click on that as well. If you want a private resume review, I also do that link in the description box below as well. And if you'd like to tie to the Church of Coding Jesus, you don't have to, but if you'd like to give me your money for some reason, I have a Patreon link in the description box below, guys. That's the end of the video. Have a great day. Cheers.